Thank you very much. So my talk will be probably on the lower end of the yeah, so this is for categories. of the high st of high, <laughs> high structures so <laughs> in um, the holomorphic topological theories. So I'll start by writing the Pendele six equation because I don't remember it by heart uh, because I don't I will not need it of course. So. Okay. So, uh, so this is an equation for for one function of the variable t, and so as you can see, it's a, it's evolution it's an equ evolution equation, Newton equation, if you like. Uh, for in fact, it's a so it's Newton equation, which has a Hamiltonian formulation uh, with Hamiltonian, which depends on time. So time is t. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's called Pendleva 6 for the reasons which I will probably not get into. It has several parameters, which I denoted by letters theta, theta infinity, theta 0, theta 1, and theta sub t. And uh, what this equation describes, actually, in, 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 the, so in the hidden form, it describes the so-called isomonerobic deformation. Uh, isomonerobic deformation of a uh, meromorphic uh, connection, uh, holomorphic connection, uh, meromorphic connection on a sphere with, uh, with four punctures. 0, t, 1, and infinity. So it's a connection of the form where uh, A's, AIs are um, 2 by 2. So this is an SO2 flat connection. And the asymmetric problem, as a monotropic deformation problem, is the problem of uh, finding the dependence of AIs of ZIs uh, as you so as you move the positions of the poles, you want to preserve the monotony data of uh, of this connection. So you want to preserve it uh, as a topological flat connection. So um, so it means that uh, as you vary the uh, the parameters and so here I chose already some gauge for the global uh, Möbius inver uh, invariance uh, in which my points are z1 is 0, z2 is t, z3 is 1, and z4 is infinity but you can uh, so you, you, you may choose not to work in this gauge it's just that that's the um, uh, it's in this gauge that we will see the connection to Pendleve, and so uh, so we want to uh, make the residues of our uh, meromorphic connection. So AIs, the residues are so they're traceless because it's an SL two, and we fixed conjugacy classes. So we fix the eigenvalues which I will choose to be generic and to be equal to the parameters theta from, from the previous uh, blackboard. So, uh, so to preserve monodromy, means that as you uh, vary this connection, and when you vary it, so you vary not only the positions of the poles, but also you allow to vary the residues while preserving the the, um, the conjugacy class. Uh, so you want this to be compensated. So you want to be able to compensate it by a gaseous formation. So to find uh, some function epsilon, so epsilon depends on z, also in a um, meromorphic way. 
such that the variation is just a commutator of uh, nabla with this parameter epsilon. And by uh, matching the, the singularities, it's easy actually to find that epsilon is, if I'm not mistaken, simply negative a i minus z minus z i. So, uh, and so that implies that the matrices um, evolve according to the so-called Schlesing uh, Schlesinger equations, which I even forgot to write down. Anyway, so this is uh, something like commutator a i a j if i is not equal to j and negative sum if i is equal to j. So uh, from that moment on, you can forget about the sphere with punctures. You can just focus on, on a bunch of uh, matrices uh, with fixed eigenvalues and uh, study the evolution in the space of matrices. Now, that space of matrices, so the space of AIs with fixed thetas up to overall uh, conjugation, so it's a, it's a constant gauge formation, so we simultaneously simultaneously uh, uh, conjugate all, all residues by, this, by the same SL2 matrix. This is actually a complex symplectic manifold. And the sum of i is equal to 0, of course. Thank you. That's because of the sum of residues. So this is a complex symplectic manifold. Which is, uh, in fact, a so what I wrote here is just a, sim it's a symplectic quotient of the product of coadjoint orbits or adjoint orbits. Well, coadjoint orbits makes it obvious that these are symplectic manifolds uh, by the diagonal action of the group SL2. And so each orbit is a, a kind of a complexification of the sphere. One should, when taking this question, one should impose some stability conditions, which I will not talk about uh, for the second. Uh, maybe I'll talk about them later. Uh, so, uh, so this is symplectic manifold, and this, this are, you have some evolution equations of symplectic manifold. So it's, you may ask the first question: you may ask whether these are Hamiltonian equations, and indeed they are. Uh, indeed, d z i a j is a Poisson bracket where the Hamiltonian HI uh, is essentially the residue of trace uh, abla squared. Well, what it means is just take the, this guy squared and compute the residue near at the point z equals ci. This is the sum over j not equal to i, trace a i a j. So, uh, so these are remarkable Hamiltonians because they are not only so because they obey not only the uh, Poisson commutativity, so they commute, but they also integrable in the sense that. can form a kind of a symplectic flat connection with spectral parameter, like a lambda connection. Um, and uh, so these co conditions imply, in particular, uh, that you can integrate 
them uh, to some generating function. And so this function is usually called the, uh, the isomonodromic tau function. Uh, so it's a function both of configuration space and so it's a function of uh, right it's a function of the on 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 the on, this, on this uh, on this symplectic manifold depending on the i well it's a function um, how should i say it uh, so it's a function on x and the space of parameters zi's yeah, yeah. so in the space of times uh, Right. Uh, so these derivatives are the same, del i and del z i? This is d by d z, 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 z i. Right. Uh, so, uh, but you can also uh, think of, uh, of this uh, formula in, um, uh, so <coughs> you can also do the usual Hamilton Jacobi uh, story, namely, uh, choose some uh, polarization, so, so choose half of the uh, coordinates on x, and uh, just try to solve these equations in the uh, Hamilton-Jacobi form. So then, uh, uh, so choose, first of all, you need some Darboux coordinates. On on uh, on that space, and uh, there are various choices. So uh, first of all, if n equals to four, which is my, my the case which I'm considering here, uh, this is actually a surface. It's a uh, well, each orbit is uh, two complex dimensional. You have two times four. That's the dimension of the space here, and you do the Hamiltonian reduction symplectic quotient with respect to SL2, which, is, which has dimension 3. So you get two-dimensional space. It's a surface which can be actually explicitly described. So actually, it's a uh, cubic surface in uh, C3. And this uh, C3 is... Uh, well, there are two... Two two ways of, of uh, thinking about it. So one is to look at the residues, try to parameterize the uh, this space by the residues, and then think of each residue. So each residue in itself is a it's a so it's a two by two matrix with z with vanishing trace. Uh, so I can write it. In this form, so so uh, so the zero trace condition is obvious, and then the eigenvalues are found by you compute the determinant, and so you get so you can think of the residue itself as of a vector in a three-dimensional Euclidean space, complexified Euclidean space of fixed length. Now the condition that the sum is equal to zero means that they form they form a closed uh, uh, polygon. And now the fact that we divide by the action of SL2, SL2 uh, acting by conjugation simply rotates the coordinates x, y, and z simultaneously. And so it means that you look at the space of poly closed uh, polygons, I mean, quadrangles, quadrangles, quadrangles in a th three-dimensional Euclidean space up to uh, translations and rotations. And so that space is parameterized by, by the length of, uh, uh, for example, by the length of, length of two diagonals. So that's two, two dimension, these are two, two parameters. And one choice of Darbu coordinates is to choose the, uh, you can choose uh, the length of the diagonal connecting uh, 
the first and the third points. So this will be essentially um, and the angle. So the usual Euclidean angle between the uh, between the uh, triangles delta 1, 2, 3 and uh, delta 1, 3, 4. Um, but, well, this, this description somehow th doesn't know about the fact that we want to build the a connection out of this residues, so it's, it's, too, it's too flat. And so instead, you can map, you can uh, do a nonlinear transformation, uh, kind of transcendental map. So compute the monodromies of this connection, the monodromies around uh, various pairs of, uh, of, of points. And so here you have essentially th uh, three non-trivial uh, loops uh, out of which you can generate everything. And so the traces of monodromies around those loops will be the coordinates in this three-dimensional space in which this modular space is a cubic surface. Now, since there are only two parameters, there is a relation between these three monodromies, within the conjugacy class of these three monodromies, and these relations are algebraic. And so you can find another system of Darboux coordinates, which is based on, on, on that uh, description. So it turns out that that's essentially slightly, it's a curved analog of, of this picture, where now instead of the flat space, the quadrangle will be sitting in the group SL2. So here it's, it sits in Lie algebra, and instead you can, by, by looking at the monodromy data, you'll get the same quadrangle in the, in the group. And then you use a spherical geometry instead of the Euclidean geometry to describe the Darboux coordinates. Anyway, so whatever Darboux coordinates you choose, <laughs> what we call them P and Q. Uh, so then, uh, uh, when you uh, divide by, when you uh, fix the gauge for the conformal group, and uh, you have essentially only one evolution uh, parameter, so the position of the second point, when the, th the other three are fixed, then uh, in, the, in the Darboux coordinates, your equations will have the usual form, so out of four Hamiltonians, only one is indep independent. You can check that, of course, uh, these fun functions are ob obey three obvious relations. So out of uh, n Hamiltonians, you uh, ha essentially have uh, n minus three non-trivial ones. And so, so that let, let me denote the one which is non-trivial by, by letter H. So, um, and so then uh, there is a th third choice of Darboux coordinates, which is related to what is now called Sklenian separation of variables in which these equations will precisely match the, the, the pen level 6 equation. <coughs> On the other hand, you, you may uh, choose to, to, to uh, the Hamilton-Jacobi formalism, and then you will describe <coughs> your uh, classical mechanical system by, by generating function, which will be a function of Q <coughs> and time. And so, and instead, uh, the equation will have the form ds with respect to dt equals h of ds with respect to dq, q, and t. And so that's the, uh, the form of the equation in which the, uh, in which the tau function appears. So, so this s is, is the tau function. So, uh, 
so this S actually depends not on, it doesn't depend on all, f <coughs> all f uh, uh, coordinates, it depends only on half of the coordinates on the free space. And uh, finally, uh, <laughs> instead of, so uh, as I said, there are many choices for, for coordinates. What usually pe people do when we define this tau function is that they choose as the coordinate q the eigenvalue of the monodromy surrounding the point zero and t. And so, uh, so tau function in the presentation where q is, is logarithm of the eigenvalue of the product g1, g2. So here I'm This is my points one, two, and I have some. I, ch I choose some base point, and then define base the basis in the fundamental group and the corresponding monodromies. These monodromies around this, the loops, which go straight to the points, and then uh, make a small circle around them. So these are. The monodromies of the uh, of this meromorphic connection along these base loops in the fundamental group. All right, so uh, that's the rem reminder about the tau function of of Penleve. and the interesting fact, which was observed in conjectured first, I think proven uh, sometimes later in 2012 by. Uh, Gamayun, Yorgov, and Lisovi um, sorry. is that uh, this tau function <coughs> has a representation in terms of conformal field theory of a rather explicit form. So I should say that back in the 80s, uh, Jimba, Sato, Jimbo, and Miba have already observed the connection of this tau function to uh, some conformal field theory. Uh, and so they, uh, I mean, they were studying. And even earlier, of course, uh, McCoy and Wu found that the, uh, the, generated, the generated versions of Penlever 6, like Penlever 2, Penlever 3, uh, emerge in the studies of the uh, correlation functions in the Isaac model in the scaling limit. Uh, but this result was so explicit and uh, kind of, uh, well, explicit probably is the best word, that uh, it prompted some explanation. So well, I will sketch the formula. I'm just quoting from, from the paper. Using the notation. Uh, so, uh, so the point is that this is a conformal block of C equals one Liouval theory. So this is a two-dimensional CFT. And so it, it, it can be represented as a sum of pairs of Young diagrams. So this is some explicit rational functions of the shape of a diagram and of the parameters. So what are these parameters? So this vector theta is this uh, four eigenvalues which we had before. Sigma 
zero t is the uh, this additional parameter which is essential which is this monogamy which is the parameter q in my story uh, about the tau function so this is the monogamy data essentially the trace of uh, g1 g2 so it's a monogamy around the points 0 and t precisely uh, it's twice cosine 2 pi sigma 0 t. So, um, okay, so uh, and so what is this conformal block? It's a conformal block for the four point function. So you in, 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 in Luvial theory, you study the, uh, the correlation function of four primary fields with dimensions uh, uh, delta 0. And so these dimensions are essentially, they're essentially quad so they're quadratic expressions in thetas. And, uh, and then you, you, you look for conform block where in the intermediate channel you have a momentum sigma 0 t flowing. So that's the, uh, that's the data which you need to fix. And so the conform block depends on, on these four external momenta or the conformal dimensions. So you can and the one which uh, flows in the middle, and of course the parameter t. And now what you do, you shift this intermediate momentum by an integer, you multiply by some quadratic, exponential quadratic form of, of this integer, and multiply by, by an additional factor, which is uh, times ratio of Barnes two gamma functions, <coughs> okay, gamma two functions. So this, since it's a four category, these are two gamma functions which, which appear. Uh, uh, and so S, the S parameter is, um, well, you can also compute it. So this S is essentially the exponential of the uh, dual of the of the Darboux coordinate, which is conjugate to Q. So in this picture, now with the curvy linear quadrangle in the group SL two. So sigma zero t is the uh, length of the diagonal connecting the first and the third points, and P is the ang is the uh, dihedral angle between the two uh, uh, curved triangles, which which this diagonal uh, defines. Uh, so it's a function. It's a function of uh, um, how should I say? It? So on on the on the full modular space of flat connections, it's this is an independent parameter. But once we uh, 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 sit on the uh, trajectory of the Penleve equation with fixed initial condition, then P will be a function of Q. So P will be essentially the derivative of the uh, hamilton jacobi potential with respect to Q. So that was the formula. And uh, it was kind of, it was a very strange formula because, uh, well, th they verified experimentally and then indeed it was proven by uh, several groups. Uh, one of the proofs was by Bernstein, Bernstein and Shechkin, I think using representation theory. Um, and another proof, I think <laughs> these gentlemen with some with collaborators proved using uh, relation to Fred Holm determinants. Anyway, uh, these are hard proofs, which, but they, when you look at this formula, and if you come from the uh, from the four-dimensional gauge theory, and you know that these objects are actually instant of partition functions of some four-dimensional gauge theory, and these Barnes gamma functions are the perturbative parts of this partition function, you start realizing that this is some. Uh, there must be some gauge theoretic explanation of that. 
But what's, what is surprising about this formula? The surprise is that C equals one conformal block is something which is kind of very quantum in the, in the language, in, in, the, in the sense of conformal field theory. While this tau function, so this S function, is, uh, since it's defined by, in the classical context, so it's a classical object, and this is kind of quantum. So what is a so it's a classical limit. In, so in some sense, it's limit. It corresponds to the limit of uh, infant conformal ch uh, central charge in some CFT uh, of something which I will uh, now recall immediately. And on the right hand side uh, has C equals one, which is not not classic not classical in any sense. So what's going on? So we uh, so so the, the, this relation between the classical and quantum is as always is uh, is very interesting. Um, and um, so, in what context would you expect uh, something nice to come out of the partition function of gauge theory, which you sum over some integers and multiply by exponentials of quadratic expressions? So, wh where does it arise? So, first of all, uh, so the B object, in fact, B times C essentially, uh, well, times uh, some ratios of gamma functions, is uh, the supersymmetric partition function. of uh, n equals 2, d equals 4. Uh, gauge theory, uh, in, in this case uh, of, uh, of, a gauge, of gauge theory with the group, gauge group SU2, and four fundamental flavors. So the thetas correspond to the masses. Of this, so the, we have four four mass parameters and four thetas. The relation is not. I mean, the, the relation is kind of pairwise one to one. So, so theta zero plus minus theta t, and theta one plus minus theta infinity, correspond to the masses of one and two, and three and four. So this theory is usually represented by in a quiver form. And even though, from the gauge theory point of view, there is all four flavors are on equal footing. In matching with conformal field theory, it's convenient to split these four flavors into two and two. And so that's splitting would correspond to the choice of uh, a specific identification, specific um, uh, channel for the conformal block. And so the T parameter is usually called Q slash. This is exponential of the uh, complexified gauge coupling. Now, sigma 0 t is usually called A. This is the Coulomb parameter. So it's a scale, it's an expectation value of the, uh, well, it's, eigen, it's the eigenvalue of the expectation value of the, uh, of the scalar in the vector multiplet. And finally, this partition function has uh, two additional parameters, epsilon 1 epsilon 2, which are equivariant parameters for the group of rotations of R4. And, uh, to, to get c equals 1, you need to impose the condition that the sum is equal to 0. <coughs> so that's c equals 1 case. So, uh, so when you translate the right-hand side of, of gamma yun yorgov and Lisovy formula in gauge theory language, then uh, all these mysterious gamma factors and so on, they simplify. So the right-hand side is simply the sum over integers. Exponential n, essentially dw with respect to dA. I will explain what w is. Times z of uh, 
a plus uh, n. Let me recover the epsilon dependence, so let me call it epsilon. Um, so the masses are intact, the Q parameter is intact, and uh, so I think that's it. <coughs> where W, uh, right, where W, uh, oh yes, sorry, sorry, I should let me put it, make it explicit, epsilon, negative epsilon, and W, which depends on A, M, Q, or an epsilon, if you like, this is a limit when epsilon 1 goes to 0, epsilon 1, logarithm of this partition function, when uh, I, uh, uh, I take the partition function for general values of, of equivariant parameters and send one of them to 0. So you see there are two ingredients in this right-hand side. One involves epsilon 1 equals minus epsilon 2, and one involves the quasi-classical limit when one of the epsilons is set to, to zero. And so, and the claim is that when you sum over, uh, over these things, and I'm missing some uh, something, something, something. Yes. Uh, Well, there should be, um, okay, so this parameter Q, which uh, uh, ah, sorry, uh, no, I think I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, something is missing. Okay. Uh, good. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me put it. Put it. Uh, just explicit shift by 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 this parameter by by the monotony data. Okay. So uh, uh, anyway, so this is some kind of re re uh, re rearranging of the terms in in, in in this formula, and so it looks uh, already simpler. And so it looks like you take the gauge theory partition function, you shift the Coulomb parameter. And you multiply by some by si by simple um, uh, exponential, which is linear in the same integer. You so it's like kind of Fourier transform. Uh, so you this formula in this formula z both the z and w include the uh, one loop factor and yes 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 everything yes yes. So these Barnes functions are uh, the one loop contributions. All right, uh, and so and that the claim is that this is this uh, so the tau the this tau function is s is a function of everything. Uh, so now q um, q without slash and everything else is, is equal to the sum. Okay, so uh, how do we understand this formula? In that formula, epsilon was set to, to one. So in this formula, epsilon is set to one. So here. The point is that uh, this partition function. So maybe the question was about upstairs oh blackboard where it's. Oh, oh, sorry. This, yeah, forget about that epsilon. It, that epsilon will never appear. Anymore. And this is from a t two two to the seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is. This is, this is All right. Um, so uh, let me exp let me uh, now explain what is this uh, tau function uh, in what's it's so I said that this this tau function of is a classical classical object. It's a classical limit of something which is quantum. So what is this quantum guy? The quantum guy is of course the uh zimologic equation in 
In fact, I should say that there are two interesting equations in, in CFT. So this is the equation in kind of WZW uh, with the group SU2, uh, conformal field theory. So it's, but you can also, you, you, you don't need to, to have a full conformal field theory. You just can look at, you can just look at conformal blocks. And uh, so it's an equation for conformal blocks of SL2 current algebra which depend on the level of this, of this algebra. And so the equation reads uh, where psi, so this is the, uh, it's a conformal block, but I will write it as a correlation function of for uh, n vertex operators, in, uh, again, in, in our case, n, n equals to 4. So these vertex operators, they're labeled by the representations of SL2, which uh, uh, have some, uh, otherwise, by, by spin, which I will take to be a complex number. And uh, they take, so this, it, it takes values in the tensor product of the, so let me call, denote the vertex operators by v hat, and belongs in to the vac tensor product of these representations. You can just take the verba modules. You, you, uh, for example, you take n minus one. Uh, uh, so you take one contra gradient verba module and, one, and uh, the rest uh, usual verba modules, and then you look for the invariance, the SL2 invariance in this, in this tensor, tensor product. Um, well, so the equation is. Uh, Self-explanatory. The 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 matrices. So the TIA, the generators of SL2 acting only at the ith uh, factor. And the remarkable thing about this equation is that it's consistent for any value of k. So again, it's a, it's a flat connection with spectral parameter. So the right hand side, you can view as an operator, and so these operators commute for different i's, and they also be some integrability condition with respect to zi's. So uh, in the limit, when k goes to infinity, <coughs> so if k goes to infinity and uh, simultaneously the spins go to infinity, roughly as uh, k times theta, uh, now these generators of uh, well, it, so in this limit, you can think of the you can think of representation <coughs> as being the result of quantization of those orbits, O, which I erased. <coughs> and so, in the classical limit, the generators of SL two will become functions, ordinary functions on 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 this uh, quadrant orbits, <coughs> and the, taking the invariance corresponds to doing the symplectic quotient as we did before. And so, in the limit. Uh, these equations will produce the Schlesinger, Schlesinger, Schlesinger system, where now A's, uh, so these matrices AI, the residues, are essentially the quasi-classical expression for the generators of SL2. So, uh, in other words, if you think, if you realize If you realize SL2 by differential operators, so then psi will be some kind of function of n variables obeying so certain uh, invariance condition. Then uh, in the limit when k goes to infinity, this function will have the form, uh, so it will exponentiate. And, uh, and so t, so they will become the functions
where pi is the usual momentum in the, again, in the Hamilton Jacobi formalism. And so this is just another parameterization of, uh, of uh, capital X, capital Y, and capital Z in my uh, previous formula. So this is now AI has the form Careful, there will be some minus sign somewhere. So this is yet another Darbu set of Darbu coordinates. These are Darbu coordinates before you take a symplectic quotient with respect to SO2. Then you need to impose the constraint that the sum of this matrix is equal to zero. And uh, and so in that limit, so this S tilde is essentially the hamilton jacobi potential, and that's essentially. the uh, tau function of pen level 6 when n equals to 4. So, uh, so the statement of Gamma Yun, uh, Yorgov, and Lisovi is that the quasi-classical limit of, of, of the current algebra conformal block, so this is S of 2 hat, is expressed through the Quantum C equals one, Virasoro conformal blocks. So these are the Liouville conformal blocks are also known as Virasoro conformal blocks. So that's a statement. So how can I understand the statement <coughs> on the gauge theory side? <coughs> well, we need to map the mm, conformal blocks of current algebra to, to some objects in, in gauge theory. And that uh, has been done. as a result of many, many years of uh, works of many, many people. But it actually goes back to the um, old idea of uh, late Sir Michael idea, which relates the uh, instantons, four-dimensional gauge instantons, and two-dimensional single model instantons. And so, uh, so the key is that this psi, which is the um, conformal block of the current algebra, is related to the surface defects in four-dimensional gauge theory, which in turn is a kind of an uplift. So it's a two dimensions, a higher uplift <coughs> of the uh, <coughs> so-called Wilson points in 2D young mills theory. So uh, recall, um, let me remind you that so in 2D young mills theory, you basically study flat connections on, on the Riemann surface, or constant curvature connections. And uh, an interesting observable you can define by, by um, allowing uh, your connection to have a singularity at a point, and you fix the conjugacy class of monodromy around this point. And so instead of the equation, uh, the curvature being 0, you get the equation of the curvature is now the sum of delta functions with some residues. So this is for several points. Uh, so these J's are what I called, it's relate, they relate to this A's, which we had before. Um, so you, it's a different modular space, modular space of connections with singularities, but uh, if you look at the holomorph underlying holomorphic bundles, you can uh, sort of project one modular space into another, and then if you integrate sorry, parabolic bundles to ordinary bundles, and so if you take the class of one on the space of parabolic bundles and take the push forward, that's the Wilson, po this, these are the Wilson point observers. 
So uh, the natural idea is now we add one more dimension to the problem. And so we uh, think of, let's say, holomorphic maps of an auxiliary space into the modular space of flat connections or holomorphic bundles on the Riemann surface. And if we allow now singularities at, at, at points, we'll get what is called the surface defect in four dimensional theory. So it means that you allow, so this is a surface inside the four dimensional manifold, and you allow the uh, the, the, the gauge field to have a non-trivial holonomy around a small small circle surrounding this, uh, uh, this surface. The, you fix, so the conjugacy class of monogamy is fixed, but representative is not. And so you get a map from, from the from Riemann surface into the orbit of the corresponding conjugacy class. And so it's a kind of a coupled uh, 4D gauge theory plus 2D sigma model. So the, the gauge theory with gauge group G, and this is sigma model on some space with G symmetry, so on G space. In the simplest case, this G space is just the, just the, uh, the orbit, the adjoint orbit. But if your theory has major fields, then there will be some decorations of that orbit. So the, no, the, the gauge group is compact. Yeah. And so this G space, uh, but the G space that need not to be compact. So it could, for example, it could be a complex square going to orbit on which G still acts. And so that what, that's what um, uh, typically, so what happens, uh, well, I will not tell, tell the full story, but uh, so just uh, so now uh, technical. So it's hard to work in this formula formulation, uh, especially um, if we want to be able to compute something explicitly, because usually we so that's the, the case when we compute something explicitly is when the group G is unitary, and we replace the instantons and the corresponding holomorphic bundles by torsion-free sheaves. And so we need to define the notion of the analog of this when in the bulk you have a shift, not, 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 a, not a bundle with connection. And so the simplest way to do this is uh, by, by uh, doing the orbifolds. So you, you impose some orbifold structure. Uh, so that uh, on the quotient, so, so, so y y y the local model is that you take Uh, you, you just you, you take ordinary shifts on on C cross C with some action. Let's say the n action, and the n also acts on one on one of the factors, so that as the algebraic surface you can project it. So on the quotient, which is still isomorphic to C two, but your shift will have now will now have some parabolic structure along the fixed locus of the, of the of the fault action. And so that uh, gives a kind of m much more explicit uh, handle on, on, on the corresponding surface defects. And one can prove rigorously. And so using the theory of QQ characters, that the partition function of the corresponding surface defect obeys KZ equation with, uh, uh, with K plus 2 being essentially the ratio of uh, <coughs> well, this is for general rank N, uh, essentially being the ratio of, uh, of the equivariant parameters. Now, the param equivariant, equivariant parameters are now not on equal footing because they have one direction. So this is the direction along the surface defect. And so here we have equivariant parameter epsilon 1. And epsilon 2 is a parameter uh, tra transverse. So this is in uh, transverse space. So uh, 
so sorry, so, so, so if you want to be rigorous, so can, I, can I formulate this more precisely? So who is, uh, so first of all, you're in SU2 case now or in general, uh, or? Uh, this is for, for SUN, for UN actually. For UN, and what is, what is your theory? What, what, what kind of matter do you allow? So, uh, so this is for any theory, any quiver gauge theory. So the, uh, for the, the, the theory which we need for, for the purposes of this talk is, is, the, uh, is the theory of fundamental matter. Uh, do you want it to be conformal or do you don't want it to be conformal? Say again? Gauge theory, do you want it to be, I mean, do you like, do you, I mean, do, do you need it? It's conformal, yeah. It's asymptotically conformal. Well, you don't need it. I mean, I mean, can you, I mean is fewer gauge theory, for example? Yes, that's a limit. That's, that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, for pure gauge theory, it's much simpler, actually. But, uh, and, and the parameters zi correspond to what? So that, so the eyes are is still gauge coupling. The the new parameters which surface defect has, which come from the fact that the sigma model has uh, its own instantons, which correspond to so they call this uh, G space uh, Y. And so we have additional uh, we have additional instanton counting parameters, which let me call X which will be mapped to the x, essentially x variables, uh, which were the arguments of my conformal block. So they come from, the, uh, from this orbifold structure that when you study the, uh, uh, when you do the orbifold, the, the instantons become fractional. And so the char instanton charge fractionalizes. So you have couplings for each uh, yeah, representation. All fundamental representations, so not necessarily. VIs here? So this is, uh, so, uh, okay, so here, in SL2 case, these are just VIMA modules. This is for SL2. For SLN, it's, uh, uh, I, I can, exp so for SLN, not every conformal block of SLN maps to something which has a Lagrangian description. Uh, so, you, so you choose two VIMA modules, and the rest should be the kind of minimal, uh, so there are some minimal presentations. Which in SL2 case, they're all essentially the same. But, uh, Sorry, it was because you actually get points on some C, but it's not space in space time, it's some kind of auxiliary factor. Sorry, so C, 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 what's C? No, in case, in case you question, get points, the eyes, yeah? Right, right. So that was uh, Sasha's question. So the eyes, so remember, uh, so if n equals 4, so we have only one parameter, uh, so Q, 1 infinity, so that's the parameter which counts instanton. So this instanton ah. counting parameter. No space-time position. Now th this is this is some kind of <coughs> hidden <coughs> hidden no, direction. It's, it's no six. I mean six five. five yeah. Yes. 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 This this yeah. homogeneous space y that you denoted y. W w what is it in, the, in some examples? So uh, it's a, so in the case of this theory with matter, it's the um, uh, it's a total sp it's a so yeah, it's a total space of. Uh, uh, several copies of tautological bundle over P1, essentially. Well, P1 being the, the SO2 mode, uh, uh, the, the, or the orbit of SO2. Uh, so in general, so it's in general it's some. That's for the orbifold case. That's the translation. So the, the orbifold is the way of representing that that, that story. Uh, and uh, what determines the, what determines why is the the way I need to specify the action of this cyclic group. On uh, on my uh, on the framing data of my shifts at infinity, so I need to specify the representation of of that in uh, in some vector space, and then you have multiplicities in which the the irreducible representations of cyclic group appear, and these multiplicities determine you the kind of partial flag variety you you'll get for for y. So y is usually your it's surface defect. So you, 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 I mean, this is a question about what kind of surface defects you fix. You're saying that you don't you don't necessarily fix the maximal surface defect. Not necessarily, but here you, should, you fix the maximal surface defect, the so-called regular. So the regular one is one, uh, n is the same as the rank of gauge group, and you choose a regular representation for the. Um, but uh, since we have a theory with matter, I also need to specify what kind of matter represent, uh, so how the matter fields split, and, and that's, what, that's, how we, that's how this choice of uh, 2 plus 2 is made. So you have four matter fields, but you have only two uh, irreps for Z2. So you choose two of them to be corresponding to the trivial representation, two of them to correspond to non-trivial representation. In other words, you're really working with Cleaver theory. So, so, uh, so any Cleaver theory, so you're saying that you're working with maximal surface defects for a Cleaver theory, and you're saying that for a Cleaver theory, there's a way to, ch to leave the surface defects to matter, so to say. Yes. Yeah. 
Right. Okay. So bottom line, bottom line, bottom line. So th that the surface defect partition function obeys KZ equation, and this is the identification. And so the limit when k goes to infinity, which it was limit when we needed to get the Penleve equation, is limit when epsilon one goes to zero. Which is also which was also the limit I used I needed to define this W function. But it's not the limit when, so it's not the case for the z function because there I have epsilon one equals ne negative epsilon two. So one more ingredient is missing, and that ingredient is I'm going to present now. And so that's the. So when things don't work, you blow them up. Right? So. Uh, um, so the idea is to compare gauge theories on two different on two spaces. So you, you, so you, you uh, take gauge theory on the on the C two with blown up point, and so we'll, we'll blow up the point zero, the origin, which is the origin of my rotation uh, about which I, I'm doing my rotations, and um, so in addition to uh, uh, doing just the blow up. It's already, f actually, for, for the case sake of partition functions, it's already a fruitful exercise to compare the partition functions of gauge series on these two spaces. And from that, uh, you can um, derive some identities of the form which will make it obvious now why I'm I'm talking about the blob. So, so there is a bilinear relation where um, you um, shift the Coulomb parameters of your partition functions by an integer, in so in general, if this is not SU2 at SUN, you have now n parameters, capital N parameters here, and then uh, the vector will be essentially point in the lattice of. Uh, uh, product, of product, yes. So, so, it's a, so it's a bilinear relation. So z is equal to z star z. Um, and the expl so explanation is the following, that uh, if you think about this blown up space torically, so it's, a, so it's a toric manifold, and the torus action, which descends to the torus action on the base, has two fixed points on upstairs. And so the, uh, the contribution of each fixed point is one of these partition functions, except that now, in addition to the instantons which uh, get localized near the fixed point, you also have kind of invariant uh, toric, toric, toric uh, line bundles. So these, these bundles which uh, uh, have a, uh, exceptional, some fraction of, uh, some multiple of exceptional, uh, exceptional divisor uh, as a divisor. And so that's what you're summing over, the lattice of, of uh, abelian magnetic fluxes going through the through the exceptional uh, cycle. So, uh, so that's one relation, but it's not enough for our purposes because we need, uh, we need surface defect. And so the obvious idea is now to add the surface defect, which will be extended along one of the coordinate axes and uh, using the same ideas as uh, Nakajima and Yoshioka used to derive this relation. Uh, now you'll get a relation of the of this form. Uh, did I do it right? Sorry, I didn't do it right. So I won't compute this. Uh, now my surface defect depends on additional parameters, which were these instanton counting parameters for the two-dimensional Sigma model. <coughs> and so now I have a relation that psi is equal to psi star z. And so this is a relation now which will relate conformal blocks of the current algebra of some gen generic level k 
control blocks of Virasoro algebra of some central charge which is determined by, by de de defined by, by determined by this k and control blocks of current algebra at a different value of k because now you see epsilon parameters get shifted so <coughs> k, k gets transformed in some interesting way essentially gets shifted by one I guess uh, and now in, in order to arrive at the relation by Gamayun, Yorgov and Lissouvé you take a limit epsilon 1 goes to 0. So then both psi's, so psi's will exponentiate and then we'll, so we'll produce the hamilton jacobi potential I should should have said uh, that uh, since so that was Sasha's question, I'm talking about the theories which are symptotically conformal. So there is a scaling symmetry under which my partition functions are homogeneous. Namely, it's a, so the parameters a, m, and epsilon they have all dimensions of mass. So can uh, so the scaling symmetry is the symmetry which scales simultaneously a, m, and epsilon, and under that scaling z is invariant. So then, uh, and the same applies to Psi. So I still the will have homogeneity one under the scaling symmetry. So I can actually risk set, after that I can scale uh, epsilon two to, to one. So I can put one here. <coughs> same thing. And now, uh, so the, the left hand side has this exponential form. The right hand side, has the form uh, so the right hand side has this form uh, plus m you see I'm so epsilon 1 is now a very small parameter so my psi is exponential of something by divided by epsilon 1 times s, but the arguments are shifted by, by something small. And so that will produce the derivatives of s with respect to parameters, and these derivatives will be multiplied by uh, n epsilon 1 or by epsilon 2, because uh, here my uh, epsilon 2 is shifted by epsilon 1 as well. And so the leading, single, this leading asymptotics will cancel precisely. They will, it will be identical on the left-hand side and right-hand side. But the subleading piece will give me a non-trivial identity. I hope I didn't, I haven't forgotten anything. And so that's the, essentially that's the identity which uh, uh, gamma union yoga for the have. <coughs> so that's the explanation of the formula. For the formula is really just the limit of the blow up equation in the presence of surface defect. So I'm sorry, I'm out of time and it's lunch time, so I should uh, probably wrap up. So another interesting application of the study surface defects is the explicit expressions for the wave functions, uh, for the eigenfunctions of, uh, of uh, um, quantum mutable systems like elliptical algebra Moser or Gaden, uh, but it will unfortunately also take more time to, to present them, so it's for some other occasion. So since I'm the last, last speaker at the conference, I would like to thank all the organizers for, and all the speakers, except for me, for, <laughs> for giving interesting talks. <laughs> Okay. Questions. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask a short question. Uh, yeah. to you and, uh, so there is a so this uh, 
quantum geometric complex correspondence, which was discussed. The two sides are related by modular transformation, which uh, revert uh, the psi parameter notations of Kapustin of Witten, and in this notation, epsilon 2, epsilon 1, they revert them yes. to each other. And then there is T transformation, which shifts by one this tau parameter. So it seems like uh, this equality is a manifestation of this transformation which shifts the ratio of epsilon by one or the well, one of them, yes, but another one is transformed in a different, in a co more complicated way. So, you, know, you, you take the ratio of second uh, to the first, and this one is indeed shifted by one, but this one is is a combination of S and T transformations. Well, it's a combination, yes. but still, so it's some manifestation yes. that uh, another generator of uh, modular. Right. Right. But all these transformations are just the fact that in, in w within the two torus, mm -hmm. which is the, uh, which is used in the localization, right. we ch can choose different uh, bases yeah. of. Uh, so this is a particular example. Yeah. Can we come up with a clean statement of, of I mean, invariance of some object under SL2Z modular transformation? Or, I mean, not object, something. What, what that something is? Well, the Z function, is, is, uh, since the Z function was invariant in, 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 in a sense, because that was defined in flat space. But the surface defect breaks the symmetry between epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, because it, you choose, choose the surface. Unless you, ch uh, so I didn't, it, this was not the most general surface effect, of course. You can define surface effects for singular curves. Mm -hmm. And so you can also choose the surface effect, define surface effect for the, uh, for the coordinate cross. So that will restore the symmetry. Um, I don't think it, it is a known uh, conformal field theory interpretation. Um, but I think probably the right girl think that the the QZ conformal block or correlation function can be obtained by the separation variable from the Levy conformal block. That's actually the um, uh, it was found by Zamalochikov in uh, in eighties. Uh, I mean, it's by Zamalochikov. It was found by explicit computation that the uh, the uh, solution of BPZ equation, which is the equation for the five point conformal block <coughs> with with one degenerate field. Uh, maps by Fourier transform to the solution of KZ equation for four points. Yes. And uh, mm. that's that's a reflection of the relation, I mean, in the gauge theory no language, this is a relation between two types of surface defects defined in, in this theory. So one defect I defined, I mean, I, I didn't define it explicitly, but I just said in words that by, by, mm, by the orbifold. And in, another one is by embedding this into the quiver theory of A2 type. And then tuning the masses of these uh, flavors so that be they, they define the surface effect. So these are the same surface effects, but in a different uh, pr uh, pr uh, representation. Look, can you interpret that, uh, whatever, the much idea into this moment? Of course, yes. It was done by, uh, I mean, it was done in, in my paper with Lukyanov, Zamalochikov, and Litvinov, that if you take you don't need to take it, you don't need to go to, through Schlesinger to get to Kenleve. You can do, I mean, you can go directly from, from BPZ equation. You take a limit B goes to zero, B being <coughs> the parameter of legal theory, and it will give you Kenleve on the nose. Mm -hmm.